find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pain for the taste of the pain. Six, six, six. Hey everybody, it's another edition of the Indie Mayhem Show number 36. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters if you want to follow me up there. Video producer up here in Pittsburgh, PA, does some work with some uh, local indie promotions. And this is the show where uh, we get together, we talk indie wrestling, and uh, with my compatriot here uh, from uh, San Antonio, Texas, he's an announcer down with Inspire Pro NWA, uh, having some great things going on there. Eamon, at Eamon 2 please with me. How are you doing today, sir? Fantastic, Sork. I'm excited once again, uh, as we do every week. Uh, 36 episodes. My God, this is it's weird. Almost, almost close to a year, I would say, which is kind of crazy to think. But yeah, time to talk about indie wrestling, as we always do. Awesome, awesome. And of course, uh, if you want to check out more stuff with the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, this is just one of the things we do. We have so much more over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, including this Indie Mayhem Show. We do wrap-ups for some of the mainstream shows like WWE, Raw, uh, NXT, and uh, uh, TNA Impact, as long as that may last. Uh, and of course, you can join us. Uh, we're uh, Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video form on YouTube. And you can also follow us. We're on the Wrestling Mayhem show super feed on stitcher and itunes so you get everything that we're doing including some of the experimental stuff that's coming up here uh big thanks to uh, uh, a basic sickness uh, uh basic sickness.com for our intro music and outro music uh go check that out for some free stuff and uh videos and more and you can also drop us a line we're at Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline if you're interested in uh, letting us know what you think about some indie wrestling or anybody we should be checking out or uh, if you've been to a show and want to let us know about it. We had a great time uh, last week. Some, uh, some of our friends letting us know how Pro Wrestling Gorilla was all the way out in California. Uh, so that was awesome. Uh, you can also uh, check us out on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, we're on Facebook and Google Plus as Wrestling Mayhem Show and of course the great Facebook group for wrestling ma'am show where we have a lot of discussion going on and you can join us here tuesday live at 11 p.m eastern time 10 p.m central for amen uh at live.sorgatronmedia.com and you can also get those links over at wrestling ma'am show Dot com uh, at the time of the show. So, Eamon, I'm excited. Uh, uh, your guest this week. I know I just uh, witnessed her in action a few, uh, uh, I guess about a month and a half ago at the Gathering of the Juggalos. Uh, who are we talking to this week? Well, we're talking to somebody that uh, I've gotten to know for a good while, uh, especially through her work in Inspire Pro Wrestling, but also all throughout Texas. Uh, she is starting to make her waves around the professional wrestling world. She's also got a big event coming up this weekend and i'm sure we'll go into uh she is female talent extraordinaire uh, miss dyslexia lexi thanks for joining us thank you for having me guys no problem uh so i guess the first question we asked to pretty much everyone that we have on the show is um you know sort of getting into wrestling in a sense but more specifically what is uh, your first ever memory of professional wrestling um well i've i've always watched wrestling like that was the main thing that I remember doing with my dad, like going to shows, WWF and WCW shows, watching it on TV all the time. Um, and I just remember watching and going to live events and telling my dad as young as eight years old that I wanted to be a professional wrestler. Awesome. Were there any uh, names, I guess you could say, that sort of stuck out to you as people you sort of got hooked on? Any, any people in particular? Um, um, mainly my favorites were Undertaker, and then I absolutely loved the NWO, um, and female-wise, I liked China. <laughs> Definitely a, a, well, I would say a big, a big influence for a lot of upcoming women. Definitely. Um, so going into uh, the transition of, you know, sort of watching it as a fan and then getting into wrestling... Um, when did you start and, and, and how did you find, how did you sort of find out about how to train and, and become a professional wrestler? 
Well, I, I found out, um, I kind of looked stuff up online. I went to my first indie show probably in early 2005, and mm. I fell in love with it. Like, So I started going around to shows and helping out and kind of training. And then I, so I started training with people in Arkansas and Oklahoma. I kind of learned, um, you know, the very, very basics and learning, you know, the, the background and the politics, you could say, um, mm. there. And then I ended up stopping for a little while and moving back to Texas and continued my training in 2006 in Arlington. Um, and I've trained with a guy named BJ Turner. And when he wasn't at TNA, I trained with Lance Hoyt. And um, I, I found out just by doing research mainly. Um, and then I had my first debut match. Um, the anniversary, eight year anniversary was September 3rd. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, it's been a while. I stopped wrestling for a little bit, but, uh, to continue my education, but, um, eight years ago since my first match. Awesome. And, and through the actual training process and, and the stuff that you were going through there, what, what, what would you say was probably the hardest stuff that, you know, in, in that field of when you're actually getting in there and training? The hardest part, I mean, obviously physically it's difficult. People, people don't understand that that ring is not a pillow. It's not, it does, it, it hurts. Mm. Every time you hit that mat, it hurts. Your back is not, it, it's not a pillow. It's not a trampoline. It's, it's a solid piece of wood underneath a little bit of padding, um, or wood planks. Either way, you're, you're literally falling on wood. Or on concrete, depending, you know, training, you're not really doing concrete, but, um, it's, it's painful. The first day, um, I couldn't get out of bed after actually my first official day of training. Um, and it's physically hard. It's mentally hard, especially being a female when you're not training as other women, there's, there's no other women. Mm. And, um, they, they push you to the point to make sure that this is what you want to do. At least that's what my trainers did. Awesome, definitely. Now, now you mentioned that you, you know, you sort of had a break in between. I actually got to see your work uh, and, and uh, saw you for the first time in sort of your second run. Uh, but looking back on sort of like your first run in wrestling, like, and I've seen some of the uh, the list of names that you've gotten the chance to wrestle. I, I know you've wrestled, gotten the ring with the likes of a mischief of a, a Portia Perez, a Sarah Del Rey, even. Um, uh, what is it like, sort of, and and. In sort of from what I could tell, sort of your first couple of years, what was it like sort of wrestling those kind of names? And do you have any any matches that stick out to you that, as as some of your favorites? Um, it was it was interesting because you know working with people like that that early on, you you had cha- you have a chance to learn a lot, and I learned a lot from this. Just I loved working with her. That was probably in my first half one of my favorite matches. Um, I still have yet to watch it on DVD, but I. You can just tell, and it was it was a good match. I I enjoyed it. Um, working with her was amazing. Um, Portia Perez, she's she's very smart into the business. Um, I actually got to see her at Inspire Pro after coming back, and you know things have changed. Um, and she's she's still great. Like it's it's great to work with people that can teach you things, like even if it's little things. They they can always teach you something new. Definitely, awesome. Now now going back in sort of your your second run of, of, of professional wrestling, and and I know now personally, uh, uh, I believe you started already. If I if I'm mistaken, you're in St. Louis now. Uh, you're doing a bit of a an extended trip, uh, touring a couple places in in the East Coast and the Midwest. Um, I I was curious of the fact because I. Talking to a lot of Texas wrestlers, I think one of the common things that people talk about is have want needing to sort of get out of the state because to, you know for the sense of getting more exposure and stuff like that. Uh, is that one of the main reasons that, that you know you're sort of doing this uh, this venture? I guess you could say. Definitely, um, it's Texas is so big that you can drive from one end to the other and still like and take seven eight hours. It's Texas is huge. Like, um, you can probably tell you San Antonio to Dallas is five, six hours and yeah. you're still in Texas. So I, I did a show the other day. I drove to Amarillo. It took me six hours, but I was still in Texas. Um, <laughs> do it, doing this tour. My first day I drove 10 hours. I drove through three states. Let me, let me put this mm. into perspective. Three states in 10 hours, <laughs> Texas, 
Arkansas and Tennessee. And I didn't get all the way through Tennessee. The next day, when I drove to Destination 1, I drove for three hours. And I went through three states. <laughs> it, so, it's, a, it's a much different it's a much different pace maybe not pace but uh, but definitely a different environment it definitely is it's it's not that you can't wrestle in texas but texas is so big it's its own place and uh, honestly mm-hmm. and i hate to say it and it's been said many a times texas is kind of like a black hole because there is so much work there it's right when you start getting your continuous booking you take those bookings every weekend and then you have no chance to get out unless, you know, somebody so happens to see you, which is hard because, you know, everybody in Texas likes to hang around Texas. Um, Nothing wrong with that. But if that's not what you're wanting to do, if you're wanting to accomplish traveling and people to see you Mm -hmm. staying in Texas is not the best bet. You can, you can still wrestle in Texas, but you have to get out. So is it, is it, if I, if I can ask, if is it, is it more of an exposure thing, like like just like uh, I don't know, it's like, is it like the, the the person that if they really want to do their craft, they need to get out of the small town, and like Texas is your small town, if if that metaphor works. Um, you can use it that way. Yeah. Um, I would never call Texas small. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the feeling. But I'm getting. If, if but if you look at it in comparison to the United States, yes, it would. It's a small piece of the puzzle. Um, granted there's a lot of talent that has come out of Texas, but most of them have left Texas and that, that says something. And it's not that there's not talent there. It's just, they eventually get go out, but they, they come back. They always come back like, um, ACH, he's from Texas. He got out of Texas. He's now in St. Louis. Um, but he goes back to Texas, but he also travels. Hmm. Definitely. And and I know, um, obviously, you're venturing on sort of a bigger tour uh, now, but I know you, you did a brief run of, of sort of the Midwest and stuff. Are you actually even participated, and as Sorg mentioned, uh, at the Gathering of the Juggalos? Um, uh, definitely a unique wrestling experience, to say the least. Uh, uh, what was it like working uh, uh, for uh, JCW? Or, or I, believe, I believe it was for JCW, uh, but it was like yeah. a women-specific show. It, yeah, it was like a women's um, show. I don't remember what it was called. Unfortunately, that's terrible. But it it was quite amazing because I've been to many a gatherings just to be a guest and, you know, paying to go. And this time I went and I was a talent there. And um, it it was probably the most mind-blowing experience I've ever had because I when I didn't have the match, you know, there's other stuff going on like concerts and stuff. And I'm sitting backstage. I don't remember who was on stage, but I'm sitting there backstage while Cannibal Corpse was getting ready for their set. It was, it was mind blowing. And it, it's something that I can say that I've done and I've always wanted to do it. As soon as, as soon as I started wrestling and watched wrestling for JCW, like watching wrestling at the gatherings, I was like, that, I want to be there. I want to do this. And I can say I've done it now. And it's amazing. <laughs> Awesome, definitely. Uh, and uh, we talked to Sorg about his experience going in and seeing all the wrestling that was happening there. Uh, just out of curiosity, I mean, working in front of that crowd, I, and I know that you know JCW, they're they're known for having to of drawing a sort of specific audience. Uh, how is it like actually sort of working in front of that in front of that audience? Um, it wasn't bad. I like I I I know what you're speaking of because I've like I said I've gone to different shows um, for JCW, but. Um, it wasn't really bad. There was a few hecklers in the crowd, one of them being actually a good friend of mine, and he was purposely stirring things up. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, it, was, it wasn't it was bad at all. It was like almost like a normal wrestling crowd there. Like I said, there's a few hecklers, and most of, most of the other people around would actually shut them up like when they were being out of line. Um, but it was I, it seemed like they enjoyed the actual wrestling, so it, was, it wasn't any different, I don't think. <laughs> I know for me, um, you know, going into it, especially because I think they, they in, in the program, they titled it like erotic women of wrestling or something like that. I was like, and, and knowing past exotic. gatherings, exotic, <laughs> thank you. Um, but, but knowing, knowing past gatherings that I've been to, I was really, really concerned. I was like, they're just going to put a bunch of strippers in the ring and it's just going to be ridiculous stuff. Right. I was really happy first to hear that you were going. I was like, oh, wait, this is a real wrestler. They might actually be, have a really cool women's show here. And it did uh, look like, unfortunately, I had to leave early, uh, but I did catch you out there. Um, also, what was it like um, wrestling at? I think it was like three in the morning. 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was like two in the morning, three in the morning. Yeah. It was interesting because you know most shows start like seven, some like in a Sunday show like on Inspire or something. It's like five p.m. So mm-hmm. um, it was it was tiring because I had a show the night before, and you know we drove, we slept during the day, and um, it was also. I wish, like I said, I wish I could have stayed at the gathering, but I had to get on the road after that because I had a show like, coming up right after that again. And it, it was just a different feeling. Cause it, it was, and it was freezing cold, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. It didn't, I don't think it really made a difference. It was, it was different having to sit around and, you know, wait for time. But I don't know. I, I didn't feel any different wrestling at 3 a.m. than I do at 5 p.m. I guess maybe that it's warmer or colder or maybe that's about it. <laughs> maybe a little more tired, but. Awesome. Now, um, I know that you actually have a really big event coming up this weekend uh, that you're going to be a part of. Uh, you're actually competing on the upcoming uh, Women's Superstars Uncensored event, uh, WSU. Um, I mean, a company that I think has been considered by many as up there as one of the top female companies right now in the United States. Uh, uh, and I know you're wrestling Cherry Bomb in, in what should be a, a really interesting match. Uh, uh, how are you feeling going into going into this weekend and going into that show? Well, of course I'm, I'm nervous because, like you said, WSU is one of the bigger female companies. Probably one of the biggest, so I, may, I, would, I would put it in the top three. Um, hmm. It's it's nerve wracking. It's very nerve wracking. But this is this is what I'm here to do, and I've been waiting and stalling long enough of my career to do this and to go there and make, go to these larger companies. That hopefully, and hopefully, I'm ready. You know, I I study. I work hard in the gym. I work hard at wrestling. I go to training when I can, and and I have a career also. So I'm trying to manage all that. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like I've improved over the years, especially in the last two years, to be able to go to these other companies and hopefully make a name for myself and, and maybe, you know, see, see what comes of it and hopefully have a lot of support. I, I feel like I have a lot of supporters in Texas um, and in the South that they'll help push me through it. Definitely. And I mean, like you mentioned before, sort of the idea of, you know, getting more opportunity that, you know, wrestling for what we consider like the top three women's promotion, you know, could be definitely a huge opportunity there. Um, so, I mean, definitely good luck in that aspect. Um, the question that we, uh, one of the questions we've been asking since sort of the inception of this show, and it's sort of, sort of a gauge of, uh, you know, sort of indie wrestling in general. And, and, and when we ask it, people take it a lot of different ways. So feel free to take it any which way you wish. Uh, but the question we have is, uh, what is, is, in your opinion, the best thing about independent wrestling, and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Um, from a fan's aspect or from a wrestler's aspect? Uh, you can you can do either or. Okay. Well, and I guess this this is kind of both, um, and this is different between what you see at WWE compared to indie wrestling. The interaction. Mm. I think that is probably one of the best things. Like, it's so much fun to interact with fans, whether you're face or heel. Um, I, for some reason, am naturally a heel, and I've been told that many of times, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that I'm, I'm very good at it. But either way, I love interacting with the fans. Like, even if it's, you know, giving a glare to somebody that's just, you know, booing me or hugging people and high-fiving everybody and doing cartwheels around and just the interaction, I think. And I, I, that's what I noticed as the difference between indie and WWE and TV wrestling is like you, you have more interaction like with the fans and on both, in both aspects, I think that's what people love most about indie wrestling. Um, worst part and it's also a good thing too is you know time time away from family and like time on the road and the time that you have to invest into it time is like probably the worst part because that you wish you had more time to do other things but it takes a lot to be an indie wrestler it takes a lot it is a job don't let anybody say oh well this is a hobby well if it's a hobby then they're not very serious about it because 
when I'm not at my actual job, even when I'm at my actual job, um, I'm on Facebook, I'm plugging myself, I'm plugging my shirts, I'm plugging my merch, I'm plugging mm-hmm. companies that I work for all the time. The only time that I'm not doing it is probably when I'm asleep. And <laughs> I will randomly wake up and, and look at my phone and say, oh, God, there's stuff on Twitter. I need to retweet. I need to do this. <laughs> No, Lexi, you need to sleep. You've got to work in the morning. <laughs> or you have a show coming up and you've got to drive for 10 hours. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's the time, I think. But at the same time, the traveling and, the, and spending the time with fans and doing all that is also a good part. But it can be, like, it can be harsh and hard on, hard on you. Definitely. And going to like, sort of that point, uh, I think one of the things is sort of creating an image for yourself and i think you see that a lot in like wwe tna sort of stuff but I, I don't think people normally appreciate when it, when you see it out of indie wrestlers and there's a lot of people that that do that stuff like yourself and 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 many others um and you can sort of see the difference between those ones and maybe the ones that kind of do consider it like a hobby in a sense yeah and, and and that's another thing I want to address too is sometimes people like I get messages on Facebook and then I get I don't respond. Sometimes I'll read the message, but I just I'll be doing something or like I'm driving or or maybe I'm at the gym or I just maybe I just don't have that moment to respond. And some people will res- like just continue to send messages and then they get mean and hateful. Like, well, fine, I'm not a fan of yours anymore. It's, it's not that I don't want to respond. It's just honestly. If I, and I hate to put it this way, I have five, I, my, my Facebook's maxed out. If I have 5,000 friends on Facebook. If everybody messaged me every day, <laughs> I would not be able to sleep. I would not be able to eat. I would not be able to work. I would not ha- be able to do anything to myself ever. I already, I already respond as much as I can. And that's, and that's just not just me. That's everybody. I think people should not be offended if I don't answer. Sometimes I, I try. Um, but if you just send hi, it's kind of hard to like judge what this conversation is going to come about. Um, I do. Yeah, definitely. definitely and- the, 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 also, I mean, the, the perils of a, of a women's professional wrestler on social media is something that, you know, is, is well, I've, I, heard it's, I hear, I've heard it's not just I hear, the women. It's very real. Yeah, yeah, I heard know. it's not just the women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had somebody on a, a little bit ago said there was some kind of like foot fetish guy or something hitting him up or something weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely that. There's always that. My Ask FM is always about feet questions and well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know. Um, but awesome. I mean, I, it seems like you've got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you, uh, especially uh, very recently. Um, do you have any specific? Um, I mean, obviously with your traveling and stuff like that. But any upcoming goals that you want to accomplish? Maybe people you want to face, uh, places you want to work, uh, anything maybe in particular. Well, I I'm I'm accomplishing one of those goals this weekend. That's what that that's beyond amazing to me. Um, I'm working again at Rockstar Pro. Um, they seem to like me, so I'm working there a few times while on this trip. But I would love to work for Shine. Um, you know, of course, Shimmer. I big 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 goal is to go to Japan or overseas in general. We'll see what happens with that. I've actually had a few people tell me they're going to try to help me with that, but you, uh, it's indie wrestling. It's life. You don't count your chickens before they're hatched, but mm-hmm. it's always nice to hear that people support you and in, in your goals. But I guess now that I've reached one of those and we're working for WSU CZW, uh, my next goal would be maybe shine. Um, and then another goal would be to be shimmer or, and, or Japan um, I'd love to work Jessica Havoc. I, I got to work in Nevaeh and I worked her at the gathering. That was great. Um, uh, let's see. I'd love to work mischief again. Now that I've grown as a wrestler, I think we could have an even more amazing match. Um, I've, I've got lots of goals and lots of people I want to wrestle, but you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't always transition. Oh, I, I one that I'm trying to work on and talk promoters into bringing in is Kong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to have a match with her. That would definitely be a fun one. But awesome. Um, so, yeah, definitely, uh, if anyone wants to check you out um, anywhere across the United States, obviously, and, and if they want to follow you on, on social media, uh, let them know uh, where they can find you. 
Well, my Twitter is Miss Dyslexia. It's M I S S D I S S underscore L E X I A. And then my Facebook is about the same without the underscore. I have a like page and then I have a regular page. But like I said, my regular page, I'm maxed out on friends. Sometimes I'll have people randomly delete me or I'll delete them or block them for whatever <laughs> reason and I'll add. But it's also, like I said, Miss Dyslexia. Um, that's pretty much what I go under on everything. Um, but it, it's M-I-S-S-D-I-S-S-L-E-X-I-A. I spell it a little bit differently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for obvious reasons, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but I, I, I'm very interactive with people. I, I love interacting with, with fans. I mean, obviously it's not going to be like, if you just say hi, I'll, I'll try to respond, but, um, sometimes it's, it's difficult, but I do try to retweet or reply on Twitter and Facebook as much as I can. Awesome. Definitely. So yeah, definitely go support to Miss Dyslexia, and, and and we'll definitely go into a bit later when we talk about the upcoming indie shows. But I uh, I believe CZWWrestling.com where you can get information on uh, the IP view so you can check uh, Miss Dyslexia out live against Cherry Bomb uh, this weekend. So definitely go check that out. Uh, so thank you very much, Lexi, for joining us, and I believe me and Sora are going to talk about some indie wrestling. Thanks, Eamon. Uh Really awesome talk. Uh, really cool talk with uh, Miss Dyslexia after uh, seeing her shortly ago at the gathering um and uh, it's cool to see when wrestlers are like down with it you know what i mean like i mm-hmm. wonder how many come in that don't really get the culture you know right um exactly. but th- that's really cool to see if she's like 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 wanted to go and everything you know zach allen's another one he's just like yeah i'm down with this stuff and i love going <laughs> to that stuff um it, 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 it's just really cool to see that um because i know some people like it's always like oh yeah those icp guys are cool or, or fuck those icp guys you know yeah, it's well, like, it's, the, it's, there's no the in between yeah. you know it's it's <laughs> it's it really is uh interesting um and i think even i've heard them saying it's like man if if we were worried about getting paid from indie wrestling we would not be doing this i think it kind of yeah. they had some clips up from the U shoot interview they did which i, I kind of want to check that out anyways um no i went through a shout out you know we, we talk about things uh but we, we should mention on here uh, of course we do productions here of course inspire pro wrestling please go check their stuff out on smart mark wrestling also we have stuff here at sorgatronmedia.com slash store including recently we just released a great um exclusive interview and some of the great uh, um, uh missing indie matches that you may not have seen uh maybe because of low distribution or anything like that um because you know these are regional kind of things uh but we got a great interview with aj styles on there talking about tna talking about the trials and tribulations talking about being back on the indies and and the state of the indies now um probably about a 40 45 minute interview intercut in there with some great uh matches him against matt hardy christian cage uh delirious another favorite of mine um um, all kinds of guys some some stuff from japan uh taking on cm punk uh, at an early super indie here in Pittsburgh. Um, great thing. It's uh, over a digital download and DVD. Um, digital downloads over, of course, at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Or you can go over to joe-dombrowski.com for links to both and other great compilation that he's putting out. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, from the now the funk prime wrestling uh, of, of guys before they were stars like Matt Cross, like Johnny Gargano, and plenty other people. Jimmy Jacobs already on there and DVD and download as well. So I I understand you saw the Ring of Honor pay per view this past weekend. I did. Uh, By the way, I, I, I'm excited. I literally, I literally decided to order it. I think like 15 minutes before it went went on air. So nice. So impulse, but that's you know impulse buying and stuff like that. Um, it was their All Star Extravaganza event uh, in Canada. Uh, it looked like a really good card, and then I think they actually really delivered a really really good card. A um, couple changes to the card, though. I found that one of the main reasons. Uh, I wanted to buy the show was because ACH was uh, challenging for the world television title against Jay Lethal in a no time limit match. And uh, ACH wasn't there. He, I, I believe he missed his flight, uh, sadly. Um, so, yeah, um, obviously stuff coming from there. And also, um, I guess the biggest thing is that there is a new Ring of Honor world champion in Jay Briscoe who defeated Michael Elgin. And in, in, honestly, I, th- I thought a really good match. Um I think one of the consensus, though, was it kind of came out of nowhere, being the fact that Michael Elgin was, – it wasn't too long ago since Elgin won the title from Adam Cole in the big sort of uh, uh, blow-off, I guess you could say. Um, so, But apparently uh, more information, I guess, is coming out that may explain the reason uh, for the title change. And 
uh, mainly. Uh, obviously, they were in Canada for the event. Michael Elgin, a Canadian resident, uh, apparently is having problems with his work visa. Uh, and mm-hmm. it, I believe the issue, the, the way it takes to sort of correct it, uh, it takes 90 days, yeah. which means he would mi- miss a bunch of Ring of Honor shows and a good bit of their TV tapings. So obviously, Ring of Honor kind of decided maybe we shouldn't, you know, we kind of need a champion. Um, so uh, definitely some issues there that hopefully will be resolved uh, uh, for Michael Elgin. Uh, you know, definitely some some really difficult stuff there. Um, we, and you hear about that a lot, obviously, honestly, with uh, Canadian wrestlers. You, there's always problems with, like, work visa stuff and stuff like that. And it, and it screws a lot of uh, places and a lot of promotions. Uh, not only that, but I know he was supposed to wrestle for AIW uh, this weekend. Uh, and mm. since he's the AIW champion and, and he couldn't make those appearances, I believe, they had to strip the belt from him, uh, which is kind of sad. But, um, yeah, so definitely, hopefully, those issues will be sorted out. Michael Oak can, uh, can go back to working in America. You know, that would be nice. Good news for a Ring of Honor, though. I'm reading that they're they're getting another syndication deal um, in mm-hmm. Atlanta. Now, typically, I know they, they, they show uh, ROH on any Sinclair-owned TV station, or at least one in the area if they own several. As right. I, I believe they're actually moving to a different network here in Pittsburgh that's owned by them. Um, I've heard. I, I haven't double checked on that. Uh, so uh, good to see that they're expanding out and uh, getting a broader audience there. So one town at a definitely. time. And, definitely. And, and like I mentioned, and I've mentioned it a couple times on the show before, is I think this is a good time to get back into Ring of Honor because it's sort of gotten back to the the stuff that's good about it. it they're, they're, they're bringing in talents and, and they're, they're making things seem big. I know uh, Matt Seidel's returning for them very soon. Nice. Uh, uh, so um, well, obviously formerly uh, Evan Bourne. Um, so I think this there's no better time to get in. And the production was great. They did it off, uh, off uh, really a flawless pay-per-view production-wise. Nice. Uh, uh, through, uh, I think they they finally found what they needed with their uh, the, them doing this stuff from Ustream now. So definitely – definitely good stuff so i would encourage people to check it out the main event was honestly really great with uh the young bucks against red dragon and two out of three falls match really really cool stuff there um so yeah i think you can still order it on demand uh, at rhwrestling.com so if you missed out definitely go check it out i would it, it's a, it's a good up and up and down it's a really good show so i would i would encourage people to check this one out in particular cool 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 um uh, so, yeah go ahead I was going to say, there are a couple of events coming up this weekend uh, all across the United States that uh, I guess we should touch on a bit. We obviously talked with uh, Miss Dyslexia about her uh, upcoming appearance for WSU, and uh, CZW and WSU are doing their double header uh, this weekend uh, in Voorhees, New Jersey. Uh, obviously, uh, some really cool stuff there this Saturday. I love, I love that there's a place called Voorhees, New Jersey, and CZW runs there. Every time I see they do a show there, I just kind of pop a little bit. Yeah, out of the uh, flyer skate zone of all places. So huh. you, you like re- watching wrestling in a skating rink? Totally go, go check them out. But yeah, this that's uh, this Saturday. Watching, the, I've filmed wrestling in a skating rink. <laughs> it's it's actually, I mean, it's I mean, it's an indie venue, but it's a very cool yeah. venue, and and they've got a good setup there. Um, and they they also do eye pay per view as well through our video, so um, you can go check out their stuff. The WSU card looks really great. Um, the main event being Lufisto defending. The, her WSU championship against Allison K. Uh, that should be really, really fun. And like I mentioned, Miss Dyslexia is on the card against Cherry Bomb. Uh, there's a lot of good, good talent on both of those cards. Uh, there's, I believe, on CZW, their uh, their main event is a triple threat tag team ladder match, which should be insane. Uh, so, uh, and obviously in CZW. Um, so go check them out. Uh, I believe if you can get more information, you can go to czwrestling.com to go get all the. Go to get all the info and stuff. Uh, also at the WIC show, I believe it will be the last appearance. Uh, I don't believe I don't believe it will be in a wrestling role, but they haven't specified uh, of Jessica Havoc, who currently obviously is working with TNA. Uh, so definitely, if you want to see Havoc for probably one of the last times you'll get a chance to, that would be the chance to do it. Um, so yeah, definitely go check them out. There's also an event happening this Sunday uh, in, in around. Uh, the Dallas, Texas area. I'm hoping to go to it, but like we mentioned in the interview, Texas is very big. Um, so, so that there's a hope uh, this Sunday, the 14th for a new company uh, that's debuting called VIP wrestling. Um, they're setting the bar 
setting the bar event uh, is actually looks like a really, really like good card of, of some really talented people on here. Uh, Lance Hoyt uh, is taking on Andy Dalton, friend of the Mayhem show. Uh, we've had him on uh, once before on the Andy Mayhem show. Uh, ACH is on the card. Uh, talents like Davey Vega, Bolt Brady, Matthew Palmer, who we've had on before. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff on here. So, uh, and it was just, yeah, it was a, it was a thing that sort of caught my eye and, and uh, caught my attention as a company. Obviously, this is their first comp, uh, their first run, and um, I'm interested to see. I mean, the, from Wagadel, just from their poster, their presentation looks good. So, uh, here's hoping they can do some really cool stuff, and that's going to be in Irving, Texas, uh, this Sunday. Uh, at the Center Park Recreation Center. So uh, you can go find out inform more information. I believe if you go to VIP Wrestling on Facebook, you can go check them out and, and find find out some more stuff about them. So hopefully I will be there, but I, I awesome. like it. That's still very tempting. Show um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Show I'm going to be at, of course, uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance here uh, at West Newton, PA, uh, just down the road from Pittsburgh, about 45 minutes. They're having their fall free-for-all six. Of course, the three-way between uh, some of the big guys there, Ryan Mitchell, Ryan Edmonds, and Chris Taylor for the title. Um, uh, some interesting things happening there. And, of course, Jesse Bell Smothers is coming back, and uh, she's the women's champion, and she's taking on, actually, a, a new girl that we haven't seen there, Mary Elizabeth Monroe, who I believe has been making some appearances in WWE lately, if she's the one I'm thinking. Um, I, uh, I believe I've heard of her once before. Uh, I've, I've heard the name thrown around before. So. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Also, friends of the show, Generation Dead, take on Strong, Sons of Strong Style. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go. Of course, they had a big update in uh, uh, their look and feel after last month's show uh, with Matt Hardy on the card and, of course, Cuball Carmichael being involved. And, and uh, as we saw at, at their uh, uh, Thursday show last month, um, the uh, Brother Love uh, uh, hey. was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 Pritchard. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Bruce uh, Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Sorry, I, I was I was screwed up his name. It's late, sir. Can't remember it's, all my wrestlers. Can't remember all my WWE Network watching at this time of night. Sometimes. Uh, so I'm interested to see uh, what is the next step for them. Whether they carry uh, this big bump they've had uh, from this last show, um, and see what they're going to do leading into salute the troops too that they're having at the uh, Cal U uh, once again in a big arena. Um, um, coming up in November. So, plus, I'm not going to be there next month because of a wedding, unfortunately. Uh, by the way, speaking of which, the wedding of which I'm going to the place I just got this message from, uh, mm -hmm. Mike Hankston of Headlocked, who's been on the show before, uh, ran in some good friends down there. Um, and they're like, oh, we know some people in Pittsburgh know pod do a podcast, Wrestling Man Show. And they're like, yep, yep. And they do, and they, they, well, he dropped the <laughs> name, he dropped the name before they did, I guess. And they sent me a message and, uh, uh, cool to see that we have we have agents out there everywhere, sir. Uh, but no, go they're, check they're, out. They're, they're everywhere. They're spreading. Go go check out Headlock Comic Book. Um, it's got art I know by uh, Jerry Lawler. It's got involvement with Christopher Daniels. Uh, Rob Van Dam I think is a part of it as well. Um, you know, a lot of wrestlers are involved at least in storytelling or if not artwork uh, sides mm -hmm. of things uh, in the book. They just finished a Kickstarter uh, not too long ago. Uh, I know I got to read at least the first issue out of that new series, and it's pretty fantastic. Um, um, so go, go look for it. support support indie comics about indie <laughs> wrestling. Isn't it like the best kind of connection around? Uh, Absolutely. for this I mean, kind of I, stuff. I mean, any, any connection you can get to, your, any, to indie wrestling obviously works. I mean, I understand you got some quick exciting news from uh, Inspire Pro NWA. We have some ridiculously exciting news um, because. Um, we mentioned uh, last week uh, the uh, the reveal that we were going to do uh, our October fifth event, which is our Battle Wars show, uh, our Chikara Pro uh, uh, co promoted event uh, with a lot of Chikara Pro talent. Also, the main event of Scott Summers versus Teddy Hart, which because we're insane and ridiculous, um, but it's going to be amazing. And one of the reasons I know it's going to be amazing because we uh, put up tickets on sale and released the full card uh, on Saturday. We're recording this on. Tuesday, and as of yesterday, Monday, we actually sold out of front row tickets. Holy crap! <laughs> in two days, in two days, we are completely sold out of front row tickets. We sold out. We put a couple more seats up, and we sold out of those. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be insane, obviously. Uh, and we're recording this on September 9th, and the show is on October 5th, so we're still a month away. Um, and that's insane to me. Uh, I think it's a testament to how much I love our fans and, and, and 
it's, it's going to be a really fun show. We also even announced yesterday another uh, talent that will be appearing, uh, not a, in a wrestling capacity, uh, but obviously it wouldn't be a Chikara Pro uh, a standard event without the Chikara Pro senior official Bryce Remsburg being in attendance, nice. which I am kind of crazy excited about because Bryce is a, uh, a big idol of mine, honestly. He, uh, he's, you know, he's done everything there is to do. Uh, in indie wrestling. I tell so. you what, Bryce was a part of IWC when I started going in around 2006 or seven, um, and he was a big part of of my experience there. And if you watch Chikara, you know what I mean. Um, you know, even even then when it was straight wrestling and not Chikara, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, really cool to see him uh, out and about and get down to Texas and you guys getting to see him too. Absolutely, it's going to be a pleasure to have him uh, in our locker room uh, working with us. So awesome. uh, that's going to be insane. Uh, for more information for the full card that we released uh, with a lot of really cool stuff, you can go to inspireprowrestling.com uh, and, and go get your tickets. Uh, G Only GA tickets, and hopefully you can get those soon if they won't sell out. Um, but, you know, the Marquesa Hall Theater is probably going to be super packed on October 5th, and it's going to be insane, and, and, and it's what I love about indie wrestling. So, mm-hmm. so um, yeah. And I think that's all the wrestling news we have for this week. Hey guys, you know, uh, I'm also, uh, if you're, if any of you guys listen to the show, you're at the RWA show, or if you're out at inspire pro wrestling with Eamon, say hi, man. I, I know I've been getting some feedback from some people at the shows. Uh, and it's been really cool to see that people are listening and are digging what we're doing here. Cause I mean, this was a pretty interesting spinoff that we did from the wrestling mayhem show. Mm. Um, it was out of a challenge we laid out for ourselves too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get an interview every week. Yes, uh, it's been working pretty well. It's, we know, it's worked out for it's worked out really people. well. I, I'm, I'm I'm shocked how well it's worked out. To be honest, <laughs> I can't believe like that we still have the energy to do this after 36 weeks. Um, and we have oh, not yeah. we have not pulled. I have another interview show that I've helped with. Um, that did have to take a week off because we couldn't get anybody. You know, I, I'm not scheduling for that one, but you know, for the guy I'm helping, um, that 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 feels good that this one went that long. Uh, with something like that, but we're tag teaming it. We're having fun here. So uh, again, if you're uh, at R- RWA, say hi to me, or if you're anywhere else, um, or say hi to Amen if you're anywhere in Texas, because apparently I just determined Texas is a small town. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I have no scope of Texas at all. I'm sorry. Just like you, you, need, have... you need to make your way down. And I'll, I do. And I'll, and I'll show you I how do. I tell is. you what. I'm going to Baltimore here in a few weeks. Um, Texas is going to have to be on the list for 2015. Absolutely. I'm thinking in, uh, 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 California's on the list for the end of the year, unfortunately. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to see. If I get used to that flying idea, we'll, we'll have to do that. Um, anyways, uh, and also I'll be at IWC is having a show in um, White Oak, PA, uh, again in the Pittsburgh area. Um, and, and hey, shouts to those uh, friends that had a big show this past weekend, Vicious Outcast Wrestling at ViciousOutcastWrestling.com. Uh, they're doing, uh, if you can't make it out to those shows, and I know I can't all the time because um, they're a bit outside of Pittsburgh, but they are doing great stuff. A uh, friend of the show, G Raver, had a crazy match. There's clips and pictures online. If you go to their Instagram, um, if you go to their Facebook, of, the, of, of G Raver going through a barbed wire table thanks to Sabu. My God. Don't kill yourself, G Raver. <laughs> Don't. Ah, uh, uh, I've, I've seen that guy do sick stuff in the ring, and then 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 the see in here that he's done that just blows my mind. Uh, <laughs> but uh, go check that out. That'll be, of course, uh, available shortly. Uh, we'll have the digital downloads on sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Um, but big stuff coming up uh, all across the board for them. Uh, matches already shaping up for their October onslaught. As well. Uh, well, we're shaping up to get the heck out of here. It's the end of podcast day for me. Please check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com. That's not right. Um, what was what was that? Why, why did I click on that thing? Uh, sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs> we got all kinds of stuff going on. Wrestling news and podcast news and all Pittsburgh news sometimes too. Um, uh, and uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including this and other shows. Uh, find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or the uh, Everything feed. Uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on Stitcher and iTunes for audio for everything we do around here for wrestling. Or drop us a line at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And uh, big thanks to Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for our music. And uh, we're here live every Tuesday at 11 p.m., 10 p.m. S- Central Time. Yes. <laughs> live on SorgatronMedia.com. Amen. Have a good week. And Sorg, what did, you have a good week. And what do the people need to do? They need to 
check out some of the wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Oh. Oh. Sink, 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 you're not.